This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in Him on this Christmas Sunday, December 20th, 2020. These are incredible times. But all of God's people have always encountered incredible times throughout history. Behind me you will see the National Cathedral standing strong, solid, but totally empty on this Christmas Sunday. Next to me you will see a beautiful neon nativity that we put up on our balcony each and every Christmas month so that all those who are driving by, as you can see the traffic behind me, on Massachusetts Avenue and Wisconsin Avenue can see a very brief but powerful neon witness of the Lordship and the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We live in a culture much like the times in the culture when Malachi the prophet spoke on behalf of the Lord and spoke out to his nation. His nation was no longer giving unto God his due. They had broken their covenant with God. In Malachi, the third chapter, we're reading and watching a people that had been consumed by the cultures around them and allowed them to take their God-given culture away from them and their relationship with a loving and caring God. But ultimately, what had really come to the point when they stopped giving unto God, they stopped trusting God. We're in a time today where a lot of people who have considered themselves religious people and even those who have considered themselves Christians are no longer giving God the trust that He wants them to have. But that is the greatest, the greatest difficulty in a person's life, in a nation's life, when people are no longer giving their trust to a loving and caring God. Malachi, the third chapter, God speaks to the children of Israel and He says, Return to Me, and I will return to you. But there were those, many, many in the nation, who said it's futile to serve God. It's futile to trust Him. The evildoers prosper. We're struggling. What good does it do? You may have had those kinds of feelings yourself. And I know that there are many people around the world and even in the United States that feel those things overwhelming them. What do I trust in? How do I trust? But I want you to know that there are those times when we need to be very evident in our faith and expressive with our faith in a loving and caring God. Those who feared the Lord and reverenced His name, the Bible says, began to talk to one another like we're doing right now. You and I, and those that will follow and watch this on Facebook later on as you share it. But when we come before God, and we begin to talk to one another and encourage one another in difficult times, it makes all the difference in the world. That's what they were doing back then. There was a small group. It was a remnant of people among the children of Israel who had not turned their backs on God, who had not allowed the culture to take away their faith and their relationship with a loving and caring God. We see that happening today. Many people becoming discouraged with all the things that they see 
They're looking around and saying, even the evil are prospering. The wicked are prospering. I want you to know it's not just those who are believers that we should share with. Those that we know that we should share with. I've had several occasions, many occasions actually, at numerous times to express God's love and care and the love of Jesus Christ into the lives of people. But I want to share just a couple of instances that happened in the last several weeks. Several weeks ago, I had to do a blood test, just a normal average blood test. And as I was getting my blood tested, a lady walked in and sat across from me while the blood was being taken from me and she was getting ready to donate, but she was in great agony, great distress. It did not take long to realize that she was a very sick lady. And I looked over at her and I just simply said, may I pray for you? And she said, yes. The lady that was taking my blood, she bowed their, they bowed their heads together and I prayed for God's divine intervention in her life. She gave me a big smile and thanked me and both of them said amen. Just in everyday situation in all of our lives. I was in the market the other day, our local market, and I saw a lady sitting in a wheelchair and it was obvious that she was a very sick lady and needed prayer. And I walked over to her, looked at her, obviously filled with cancer, and said, may I pray for you? And she said, yes, and a big smile crossed her face. And I prayed for God's healing hand to touch her. Two days ago, I was in the same market and a checker that we know was stocking shelves. I knew that she had been ill and I knew that she had struggled. And she said, this is the worst time of the year for me. She had lost three babies to miscarriage early on in her life. It affected the rest of her life. I said, may I pray for you? And in the market, we stood there not a big ceremony, but just a simple expression. That's what we need to be doing every day in a discouraged world, in a discouraged culture that is so desperate for the love and care of a loving God. And as we celebrate this Christmas, the messenger, the Messiah has come. That's the way the beginning of the third chapter of Malachi begins. And we celebrate His greatness. We celebrate His majesty. But when those children of Israel, the small group that had not succumbed to the culture around them, began to share with one another, all of a sudden, God took notice. I believe God is taking notice again of our conversation here and of your conversations with others, not about the terrible things that are taking place, but about the greatness of God, that He is faithful in an unfaithful world, that He is all-powerful, that He is majestic and loving and caring. We need to acknowledge Him more and more. Even when we pray, when you begin to pray, acknowledge the greatness and majesty of God and who He is. And then share your prayers with Him. But share those things with others. Pick up the phone, call family, call friends, and share it in the marketplace. But God saw all this, and I believe He still sees all this. And He had a scroll of remembrance brought into His presence. And He had the names of those individuals who feared and reverenced God and honored His name. He had them their names written down in that scroll. I believe he's still writing in that scroll, still having the angels of the Lord write your name and my name down in that scroll of remembrance. Then he goes on and says, you, you who fear and reverence my name are my treasure. 
are my treasure. Our Christmas treasure gift to God is to fear and reverence Him, to love Him, to honor Him for who He is. And then that chapter finally finishes. In a culture where people no longer can discern between truth and a lie, between the righteous and evil. In that time, and we see it in this time, the word of the Lord says, and they were once again able to discern, to recognize the difference between righteousness and evil and wickedness. God, give us the strength and the wisdom to discern and the courage to speak your name, Lord Jesus, to a desperate people. Lynn and I want to share, and our son Mark want to share our Christmas wishes with you right now. Thank you for joining us on Facebook Live over these last weeks and being a part of the Renaissance gathering. But I wanted to conclude with a wonderful spiritual, one of my favorite spirituals, Sweet Little Jesus Boy. Sweet Little Jesus Boy, they made you be born in a manger sweet little holy child we didn't know who you were didn't know you'd come to save us lord to take our sins away our eyes were blind we couldn't see and we didn't know who you were long time ago you were born born in a manger low sweet little Jesus boy the world treats you mean, Lord, treats me mean too. But that's how things is down here. We didn't know who you was. You have told us how we are trying master you done shown us how even when you're dying just seems like we can't do right look how we treated you but please sir Forgive us, Lord. We didn't know it was you. Sweet little Jesus boy, born long time ago. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for coming and sharing your love with us. May the blessings of the Lord at this Christmas season 
be yours and all those you love in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.